feel like sometimes life is really mental. Dude, that's actually a really good name for a podcast. <laughs> Even when you lose all hope, you go deeper than you've gone. Hold on till you can't no more. Pick like one habit, one thing in your day, whether it is taking a walk, whether it is calling someone that uplifts you. It may make you feel uncomfortable, but uncomfortably happy. Hey everyone, welcome to the Really Mental Podcast, where we want you to know that no matter who you are, you're not alone. Please follow, like, subscribe on our socials at Really Mental Podcast. And if you enjoyed today's conversation, make sure to give us five stars. We really think this one is worthy of that. We have an amazing guest on today. Her name is Radhi Devlukia Shetty, and we're talking about positive thinking and also how the food you eat influences our mental health. I'm really interested in this one personally. I wanted to start things off. Harry, when is the time that you realized it was important to focus on thinking positive? The first time I really realized that was when those negative thoughts were coming through and I wasn't able to maintain that level of positivity that I did have before because of like external things that were bringing in self-doubt. And I really realized that the more I got caught myself in that and like the more I thought negatively, the lower I got. So like it would start at a baseline and then one negative thought would happen and then I'd move down a little bit. Then another negative thought would happen. Then I'd move down a bit. And then slowly and slowly over time, I'd find myself in a really bad place because of all those negative thoughts all the time. And I think as people, we really attach ourselves to the negative thoughts. Like it takes like three positive thoughts to like equal one negative thought. And I think that that's really important to remember because the negative thoughts always mean so much more for some reason, even when you're trying to push them away. What's your experience with with it being Will? Yeah. Before I go into mine, I I had a question that came up from that. I was wondering when that started for you, when you realized you were having negative thoughts, like was that years ago or recently? Oh, years ago, probably about like six years ago, around that 14, 15 year old age group, I think because of a mix of like puberty and just like a lot of just different shifts in life and just that mm. confusion that a lot of young teenagers go through, that's where it started to manifest and come through. I think for me, it was, I remember from 17 to 18, I really started noticing a change in my emotions and I didn't really know what it was, but I guess maybe part of it was just puberty, but I definitely was trapped in the view I had of myself. Like I thought the way I saw myself was the only way everyone saw me and I couldn't change anything about it. So in that sense, I felt really trapped. And it wasn't till I realized that if I thought positively on something, I actually really could change my perception of it. That's when I noticed the power for the first time. That also opened up a lot of doors spiritually for me where I just like kept wanting to learn more because I felt like I had just been naive to like my own brain, which is such an important part of living. But that was definitely the first thing I felt. And I think that I just felt it manifested in just lonely thoughts. Like I sort of felt like I was really an outsider. And I think definitely in high school, that made me uncomfortable and anxious at certain situations just socially because, you know, that's a tough place to be in mentally. And the the outside world, I feel, you know, you tend to reflect what's happening inside. So that was the first time for me. And I realized within the last year how important, you know, the food was that we put into our body because I was trying to get healthy for like a year and Harry knows this. And there was some times when I'd call him like just really upset and like, I probably even cried on the phone to him one time, but I found it really difficult. And I just started to get a lot of changes with my health, change the things I was putting in my body, taking vitamins. And I realize now how much better my body feels. So Roddy's going to come on and talk more about that to us. Still so much to learn for me personally, so I'm excited to learn about it. And hopefully you can too. With that in mind, we're welcoming Roddy. Just want to let everyone know that we have an Amazon AMP show every Sunday at 7 p.m. PT and 10 p.m. ET with amazing guests similar to the podcast. Please go check out the Amazon AMP app and follow us at Really Mental. Could you please tell us about yourself for anyone who doesn't know who you are? I feel like I'm a bit of a lost soul on a path of trying to figure out who I am and what I'm doing in life. Um, But I love sharing my love through um, cooking for other people, sharing recipes, um, 
sharing everything that I'm going through in hopes that somehow whatever I've learned is going to help somebody else. Um, and I do that through social media, through um, my YouTube videos and, and Instagram. Um, but also just love trying to turn every situation that I get into um, into some sort of learning journey as like really trying to understand why it's happened to me and what I can learn from it. So I feel like I'm really just sharing that at the moment and um, going through it myself. So I hope that describes me. <laughs> How would you describe your energy at the moment? I'm someone who, even if I'm going through like a not so great day, I feel like I try and take whatever goodness I do have in me to share it with other people. So I'll be honest, right now I'm feeling a bit exhausted, a little bit lost because I'm trying to figure out what I want to do in my life in the next stage, um, but still enthusiastic about life. I love that. Well, I appreciate your honesty because sometimes it can be easier to sort of present, you know, a front, right? And just be like, yeah, you know, things are good, but uh, <laughs> I, I definitely have had those days as well. So thank you for that honesty. I really want to get into sort of the part you mentioned around feeling a bit lost because I think that will be a really interesting conversation. Before we head there though, I'm wondering what was your childhood like and what were you like as a kid? I feel I had a really lovely childhood, if I'm honest. My mum and my dad were always so supportive and so loving and caring. I was a younger child, so I would I would actually say I was probably overloved and over cared for where I got to my adulthood and I was like, I don't know how to make a decision for myself. Like I don't know how to how to do anything myself because I was babied so much growing up and babied over the age of being a baby, you know, like until my adulthood. And so um, I'd say it was it was a great, I feel like I had a very supportive, loving, caring childhood. Um, when I was younger, I was on the chubbier side. And so I have to be honest, when I was, when I was up till the age of about 11 or 12, even though I, as other people would would have like named me was overweight. I um, was actually so comfortable in my own skin and actually really happy. I would be like, if I see all the pictures of myself, I was like in front of the camera, like so excited to be there. And then I'd say just as time went on and you experience other people's energy towards you because of how you look, I'd say um, my my enthusiasm for life kind of went less and less and I became a lot more insecure. But I feel like everybody, so many people go through that through their journey. And I kind of think that if that didn't happen to me, I probably wouldn't have been able to appreciate other people as much having been through it myself. I was the opposite. I was like really, really skinny. Okay. It was fine up until like a certain age. And then I realized like, I'm a really like skinny dude. And I was like, how do I gain weight? How do I get muscles? Do I need to go to the gym? Do I need to do all these things? And those internal thoughts started to like battle and happen. And then I realized over time that at the end of the day, as long as I'm healthy and happy, then that's more important than the way that I like necessarily look because that's out of my control to a yeah. certain extent. Like genetically, I was just like a smaller guy. Yeah. How did you deal with that when you first like felt those emotions at like that 13, 14, 15 age? The natural instinct was to start trying to change things about myself. Um, and I actually, I actually grew up in a school which was predominantly um, – like people that weren't of my culture or my my ethnicity or the color of my skin. My first initial reaction from what I see through the pictures that of me growing up was that I was trying to shadow other people um, and really trying to like be those people versus trying to figure out who I was. And so that was my initial response. And then when it started being about my weight, if I was honest, from the beginning, I don't know whether it was because I just loved food so much. I was like, I never want to do this in an unhealthy way, unhealthy way. Like I didn't want, and by that, I mean, I didn't want to crash diet. I didn't want to starve myself. I didn't want to do all those things that like you think will, will, will help the situation. Um, and so I just started instead educating myself on like nutrition. And, and my mom was always really brilliant in that respect like she always taught us like the the benefits of foods and like what we should be eating and how it helps us and so it was really just taking more interest in what I was putting into my body rather than how I could change my body and I feel like that's probably not something that we hear too much in a world full of like I feel like ads around you know weight loss how did you find that that changed your mental health and physical health Honestly, I am a strong believer in um, food and herbs and spices being able to heal a lot of our like mental, physical and emotional well-being. And I studied Ayurveda as um, as when I, in my later like later years, um, closer to now. And it honestly just confirmed that for me. I 
really do believe that if we're in harmony with nature and nature includes what we're eating, that actually creates like we become ill physically, mentally and emotionally when we disconnect ourselves from our external environment and from what we live around. And so instead of trying to live within it and being immersed in it, we try to exclude ourselves from it. And we think like we try to separate ourselves from it. And so I think for me, as soon as I started learning about like the spices that can affect my mind, how they affect it, how different foods can affect my mind, my body and my emotions, it really helped me to start you know, it's simple. You you know that this can boost your energy levels or this can um, uh, end up creating endorphins in your body. Okay, cool. Let me start inc- incorporating more of those. That doesn't mean I have to cut things out, but let me even just start by not cutting things out and including all the things that I know are better for me. And if I still feel like having things which are deep fried goodness and like things like that, I'll be like, okay, cool. Let me do that. But I noticed such a difference just by incorporating little things and adding them in. And then slowly the things that kind of didn't make me feel so great, fell away because I had learned and and started to appreciate the things that made me feel good and really tuned into my body to think, how does this thing that I'm putting into my body make me feel? For you as a person, would you say that that you have found like the exact types of foods that suit what you need? And second question to that is, is everyone different or are there the same type of foods that help everyone in their mental, spiritual and physical health? Everyone is so different. And that's why I love Ayurveda. For anyone who doesn't know what Ayurveda is, it's root. It's like Ayurveda means life and Veda means knowledge. It encompasses every single thing that we come into contact with and that we put into our body and basically teaches you how to um, understand the world within and without and without or outside of you and how to harmonize both to create optimal health. So that means that if I if my body type and your body type are completely different and each person is, it's based on, well, in Ayurveda, it's based on your, the elements in your body and to what degree you have, which element. Um, but it says that how can we all look so different and feel so different and yet be given the same thing for all of us? It just doesn't make sense. And so it's understanding which, um, elements, in Ayurveda, which elements are higher in your body and and act according to that. So for example, if I have a cold, my symptoms may actually be very different to, to the cold that you generally have, because I already have a lot of the airy quality within my body, which means that I may get it way harsher than you do. And that may mean that I need a lot more of the specific spices, the specific like foods that my body needs versus you may need like heating spices or spices that create more energy in your body. Once you understand the basics of the the qualities of the foods and the, the nutrients that you are getting, it can definitely help direct you to um, to change your body and, and, and help it feel the way you want it to. And I've experienced that personally. Whenever I'm feeling like even dullness or like lethargy during the day, I know what spices I have to take. I know I should take, like, I'll put peppermint on my head to help energize my mind. I'll um, have a ginger tea with, there's a spice called Ajwain. I know that if I have that, I'm guaranteed to feel energized again and to, my body feels rejuvenated because that's what it's doing inside my body. It's almost a secret, but it's not a secret. It's something that people don't focus on enough. We're always looking for a quick fix, but just learning some simple things. I'd say start with your spice box. And really expanding your spices and like understanding the benefits of them. They're such easy things to add into what you're already using or already eating. And there's so many different ways of using them and they can really make such a difference to every part of you mentally, physically, and and emotionally. If you were to say like a really simple, good place to start when it comes to like adding a spice in, where would you start? I mean, like I'm lemon and herb at Nando's. So like (laughs) hopefully it's not too spicy as well, but... No, I tell you what, that's also a, a misconception that spices mean that they're, it's going to be hot in terms of like a chili spice. True, um, true. There are sweet spices, there are bitter spices, there are um, pungent spices, like there are spices that don't necessarily mean it creates like heat or heat on your mm, tongue or in your body. True. So I always recommend like my go-to spices, if, it, if I was trying to do a generic one for everyone that really helps with your digestion. And remember, your gut is linked to your mind as well. Your gut health is so directly linked to the way that your mind also feels. And so there's this um, super blend that I call, it's cumin, coriander, and fennel. And they're the three spices that's called CCF. And you can use it 
ground up. You can use it in whole seeds. Every single morning I wake up and I put a teaspoon of coriander seeds, cumin seeds and fennel seeds into water and I boil it and I drink that. And it helps to rebalance um, the your digestive tract. It helps to subtly detox your body, take out the toxins that have accumulated overnight, but also it helps to purify the blood too. And so the blood that's pumping through your mind, through your, through your entire body, um, it's helping to release all the toxins subtly through that. And just simply doing that, like if you think about it, toxins don't decide like, oh, I'm just going to hang out in your liver. They go through like every part of your body. And so um, I definitely say that is a super blend. And I also sometimes powder up and I use it in my curries or um, yeah, even throughout like anything that you're eating, you can put it into your dressings. It's such a simple thing to add in, but those three spices are they're known as tree doshik, which means that it's great for all body types and helps to rebalance all body types. Wow. Well, I'm going to start there and I'll let you know how it goes. I feel like sometimes as humans, it takes us running into a brick wall or um, in other words, you know, having a setback to really like take the time to understand some of these things. For you, was there a point where like you felt really forced to be like, okay, I really have to learn more about my health or was this just a natural sort of passion you had for learning more about it? I would say the more I began to value myself and felt more worth in myself, the more I realized how important it was for me to also value the vessel and the body that I am in. That means that I have to think about the foods that I'm eating, the things that I'm listening to. Every single thing that goes through every sense of mine is going to be affecting my body and my mind and my my spiritual state. And so I think that has increased as time's gone on, as I have, as I have increased my love for myself and felt the worth in myself. And I noticed that I want to eat things that aren't necessarily good for me. And I go into bad habits as soon as um, I feel I start to like question myself or I feel self-doubt or questioning my self-worth. And so I really think that's what happened. It was more like it gradually, I started taking more interest in my health as I started to realize how much I cared about myself. Were there any specific things that you kind of like, did or thought to realize how important your body is and how important you are as a person and really care about yourself? When you end up being accessible to like a fair few people, like a lot of people, I feel that the energy that's required of me to be able to actually give authentically and to be actually, actually be able to help other people Um, I was noticing big dips in my energy where I would just want to be a recluse and just like sit in a room and not want to talk to anybody, not want to go on social media, not want to do anything. And I realized it was like when I wasn't fueling myself, it was it was disabling me to be able to give to other people. And um, I realized that's honestly where I feel so much of my joy comes from. And like I, I feel a lot of what I, I've, the happiest moments in my life have been when I have been able to give continuously to others. And the only way I realized I could do that is by replenishing myself. And so it was almost like, a, well, you're not going to be able to do what you love if you don't do this part of it. And so um, it just had to be a, a constant, consistent decision in my mind that like, okay, if I decide to skip three meals because I'm busy working or I'm distracted, that's then going to not allow me for the next few days to be able to even like have the energy to be able to give to other people. Um, and so, yeah, I think that's probably been my fuel for wanting to just look, and also just like being so grateful. Like I always think about this LA has been, you know, such an eye opener for me because on every corner, there's someone who is suffering and like physically, especially, I don't know about mentally, they may be so happy mentally and emotionally, but a lot of people who are physically suffering, And we have the choice every single morning. Like every time I'm feeling low in my mind, I'm like, I wake up and I'm like, at least let me be grateful for the fact that I've woken up and I can see and I have my limbs and I can walk and I, I, you know, all the basic things that I'm able to do. Every day I walk out into Hollywood and I'm like, this person cannot do that right now. And so um, it's that gratitude of like, I've been given this and I'm not looking after it. And that feels like a really ungrateful way to live. Yes. Gratitude. It's a big word and it's a big practice. I mean, I think for me personally, I realized when you change the way you see things, the things you see change. I always just go through my day and count what I'm grateful for. Is that something that you've picked up or how do you go about, you know, implementing gratitude in your life? 
You know, I started doing it when I noticed negative thoughts coming into my head. I would try and flip that into something that I was grateful for. So like every time I heard my mind complaining or even like me vomiting complaint, I would be like, okay, afterwards I'd be like, okay, fine. I had that moment, but like, what, how can I, I've, I've built up all this like negative emotion in me. I really need to do the same with the, like with the positive and with the energizing thoughts. I always find because gratitude is now spoken about so much. People think of it as being like cheesy, but I feel like I need to be reminded of it every single day. It was in noticing my negative patterns that made me more aware that I needed to be more grateful, more grateful. And so that kind of, inf- that kind of um, sparked more gratitude in me every time I ended up seeing myself kind of go down a, a negative rabbit hole. I know in a position that I'm at now is very similar to what you said at the very beginning where Uh, you were saying how you're trying to figure out what you want to do in the future and you're in this kind of transition period. I know for me personally, that's when a lot of these negative thoughts start coming through as well. And it's really hard to practice gratitude because then my brain goes, what am I grateful for if I don't know what I'm doing? Mm -hmm. How have you been able to deal with that? Yeah, good question. Honestly, I'd say that I'm probably going through the like, I'm probably going through one of my like rougher times of trying to figure that out. and. Yeah, I would say that I would wake, I probably wake up and my initial thought is not like happy and like excited to do what I'm doing during the day. And it's not like energized and, oh my gosh, I feel like I've got purpose and I know what I'm doing. Like I don't, I've, I've been through that and had that feeling. And I can say, if I'm being honest, I don't have that at the moment. And so I agree. It's, it's a lot harder to wake up and feel feel that gratitude. I think you can still be grateful for the basics in life without knowing what you're doing. If that makes sense. Like, yes, I'm, I feel lost and I feel like I don't really know what I'm doing and I don't know what to say yes to, what to say no to, or like, I don't even know whether I still want to do like, let's say social media stuff. I don't know what, what part of my life I'm really enjoying. And I think what's helped me, the only thing at the moment that I feel I really look forward to is um, read, like I've started reading certain books right now. So I'm reading The Way of Integrity by Martha Beck. It has been such a phenomenal book. And I think finding, whether it's reading, whether it's who you're speaking to, finding something in your day that helps you to bring that out of you. That book has been that for me because it asks lots of questions. It like really makes you think about the things that you're like hiding from yourself. Like, what is it that you're scared of? What is it that you're feeling lost about? Like, what are you hiding away from yourself that's creating this dullness within you? Thank you for your honesty. And I mean, this is something that both Harry and I can say definitely have have been through and I'm sure many people listening have too. My question would be in terms of the the stage you're at, I feel like there's, for me, there's always a few stages. It's like one part of it is, you know, recognizing that um, maybe I'm not fulfilled with what I'm doing. Then there's the process of sort of having the strength to be like, okay, I do need to make a change. Even when there may be people that are pulling us in different directions or telling us, you know, you should really do this. How are you finding that whole process? Do you feel like you have a clear headspace at the moment to figure out what you want to do? Or do you feel like you're still battling those sort of expectations or pressures from maybe other people? I'd say it's a bit of both. I definitely feel, I'll give you an example. I, I, it's not something I want to do, but like someone was telling, someone had, had approached me about doing like, um, doing acting for like a Netflix movie thing. And I was like, oh my God, this is like, what an amazing opportunity. And like, it obviously is, it's an incredible opportunity. I'm not an actor, but amazing opportunity. And, and there was so much of me that was, that was like thinking about saying yes to it. And then as I broke it down and I was like, actually, that makes me feel so anxious. It's not something I want to do at all, but because of my image of how people be like, oh, but like people will think I'm on a Netflix movie. Like that means I've made it. Like I've, I've done everything I'm supposed to do. I was like, made it according to who? Not me, because I'll do it. And I won't be happy in the process or in the finale or having my face up there. So it was just an interesting process to go through because it was, I was saying, I was literally contemplating saying yes to it for months of going back and forth, just purely, not because I thought I wanted to do it, purely because I thought, but other people would want to do it. And other people would think I'm mad for not doing it. Go back to your values, go back. And that's what it says in in the book I'm reading, The Way of Integrity. It's like, forget everything else, forget the glitz and glam around everything. 
go back to your core values, find out what your core values are. And once you've got them, that will guide you into what you should say yes and no to so easily. Like it will really be your anchor and understanding. If it doesn't spark you joy and it doesn't feel aligned and, and your, you know, your gut instinct says no, it's probably a good indication that you shouldn't be doing it. And I think I've been really trying to tune more into like, what are those values? What are those core values, those core things that mean everything to me? And and will this thing align align with it or not? For me, I don't want to be known as an actor. I want to be I want to share me and I want to know, I want people to know me. I don't necessarily want to be acting as someone else. But that that's someone else's comfort. And I have to be okay with that. Yeah, I think that's a real big maturing realization too. Those are some hard things to navigate. And what we're speaking about now, it's easier to say yes and to people, please. And I feel like there's so much in society too, which also like teaches us to be people pleasing. I've been thinking about that sometimes too, where I'm like, how come I'm doing this? And I'm really happy I am. But then I'm like, but I'll say no to something else. And I'm not prepared to do that when that feels like less of a discomfort. For instance, Harry and I, we went on TV for the first time to talk about really mental. And that felt like a no brainer for us. But there's other things where I'm like, oh, I just don't want to do that. Where I'm like, that would be less of a discomfort to me than doing that. But I feel like it's just that, I guess, following your heart, right? Like, cause we love this where it's like, okay, no matter how uncomfortable we feel, we're just prepared to go through it for that. But there's some things where I'm just, I'm just not. Yeah. It's not aligning with you. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. If you were to say like your sort of mission, do you feel like you have a grasp of where that is? Or are you just completely figuring that out now? My ultimate mission. And I don't know how that mission is going to like to come to fruition but like my ultimate mission is definitely and has always been from when I was young if whenever I've talked to my parents is like to bring some sort of joy and contentment to people's lives to help be able to help someone heal their body not through um and and for them to be able to trust their own intuition with what they need you could know yourself way better than anybody else does physically mentally and emotionally and yes you may need some guidance and help but to be able to give people that power back to help with education around that of power of maybe I don't need to go to someone else to fix my emotions. Maybe I can do that myself. I think that's what makes me really happy. And so even when I am feeling low, I'm like, even if I can make someone smile, help someone feel more in control of themselves, help someone give their, give someone their power back. That feels really good to me. I love that. And I don't want to obviously put any pressure on you, but I would love to watch a TV show where it includes like, cooking those recipes we were talking about mixed with like some of that discussion but we'll see what happens yeah definitely I think that definitely feels a lot more me than like being like a superhero or like acting like that yeah (laughs) (laughs) so in terms of I mean we're sort of talking about careers now and I do think this is a really interesting conversation I do want to touch on some of the positive thinking stuff that I read on your on your website and I know you cover and like to talk about So in terms of shifting our thinking from negative to positive, we've spoken about how even already sometimes you will catch yourself having those negative thoughts and turn it into a gratitude moment. Do you have any other sort of advice for someone that's just really in a dark place and just feels like they're unable to like change that pattern? I really do believe in the um, adding things rather than subtracting, like adding things that that make you like, cause a lot of the time people are like, oh, but you're doing this, this, and this, and that's what making you, what, what's making you upset. And that's what make what's making you depressed. And a lot of me thinks like, it's so much harder to let go of things, even if they're negative things or creating negative patterns, because they're part of you. It's so much harder to let go than it is to add into your life. I, I read this thing recently, which is like, wherever your mind is focusing, that's what you're growing within you. Like whatever, wherever your mind is focusing the, the attention, that is what you're growing and you're nourishing and giving life to. So instead of focusing on all the things you want to get rid of, because you're still giving life to that by focusing on it. Why don't we focus on the things which you want to add in that could potentially lift you? Pick like one habit, like one one thing in your day, whether it is taking a walk, whether it is calling someone that uplifts you. Choose the thing that it may make you feel uncomfortable, but uncomfortably happy. The comfort becomes the unhappy and the comfort becomes because you've been in that for so long. That is our comfort place. So sometimes when you end up feeling like that and then you're not ready to you know, get out of it, it's like when people try to elevate you above it, it feels uncomfortable. 
because it's so unfamiliar. Pick something that is not for um, assessment, not for not for like um, you to judge yourself on. It's not about your abilities, not about your capabilities. Pick something that is purely just for joy. Not, not to show on social media, like pick the thing, pick one thing that you are doing just for you. What are things you've kind of brought into your life to practice that positive thinking? What have you added recently that's helped with that? I find that for me, finding stability in my day-to-day practices has helped me. So what I mean by that is creating like routine creates comfort. I know there's like beauty and spontaneity and I know that it's so lovely to like have moments where it's like unpredictable and great. But to be honest, when you have like routine and like, and, and something that is consistent throughout your life, naturally it brings grounding to yourself. It brings like stability in your mind, your body and everything like chaos externally will create chaos internally. And I know lots of people like work best. Like they're like, oh, I love chaos and I love my place being messy and I love all of this. And I'm like, but really do you? Because like really when you you feel the, like I find for majority of people when they create systems in place, um, create set structure, even though their structure can be loose, but a structure in your life, it really calms the mind and helps you to be able to focus on what you want to focus on. And so for me, it was getting back into a routine. It was going to sleep at the same time, waking up at the same time, taking my supplements, like knowing like pick one energy boosting supplement like ashwagandha or like even just a multivitamin that's gonna, what we don't, like so many of our deficiencies, our micro deficiencies in our bodies can create so much havoc in our digestion and our, and our mind. Like our mind is filled with micronutrients. It needs it to survive, to, to live optimally, to focus our memory, and all of those things, when you end up feeling like, I can't focus on this and I, my memory is like so bad right now and my attention's so bad, that can also help us feel so like lost. We feel like we're failing, but we're not. It's just we're not doing the right things. And so I'd say get back into a routine and it doesn't have to mean like you have to have a full schedule. Commit to showing up for yourself in one way, in, in, in two ways, whatever it is. But as soon as you start committing, you build this trust with yourself. You start feeling like, oh, wow, like, and, and you end up gassing yourself up. You're like, oh, wow, like I did this. I stuck to this for a week. And you, and I feel that that really helps to create a bit more love for yourself. More, You feel like you're living more in integrity. You feel like you're failing a lot less because you're picking at least like I did this one thing. I'm telling, I'm, I've decided I'm doing this one thing every day. And that's waking up at the same time, for example. And like when you end up committing to it, you end up feeling... Yeah, so much more love. Just like you feel happier when someone else commits to you, when you commit to yourself, you're going to feel exactly the same way. What is something you're excited for for the rest of the year? Is there something you have planned that you're doing? Well, I am in the process of writing a cookbook. So that's been really exciting. And I'm just kind of wrapping that up, finishing off the final few recipes. It's a mixture of recipes, but like got a thread of like health and wellness and understanding your body and everything we spoke about. Also, hopefully by the end of the year, we'll all know what we're doing in life. <laughs> I know, right? Hopefully, hopefully sooner than that, right? Like I'm hoping that it'll be like the next like month or two, not like <laughs> six months. But for you, Radhi, what are you focusing on for more of a like mental health, spiritual health, um, that aspect for this next 12 months? Yeah, I think, you know, uh, when you said it's hard to maintain, like it's so easy to like commit to something, but the maintenance of it. And I think that's honestly what I'm focusing on. It's about just constantly staying committed to something. And I think that's really what I'm focusing on, whether it's like, if it's, if I'm, if I'm sticking to my meditation, I'm forgetting my supplement. There's always like one area that ends up suffering and I'm trying to create a balance of like, these are the things that I want to maintain in my life consistently. And so how do I go about that? And so I think I'm really looking forward to creating some sort of balance and system in my, you know, in my day where I don't get to the end and I'm like, oh, I did this, but I didn't end up doing this, this and this. And those things are still really important to me. And so I'm really creating like a routine again, like redoing my whole routine. So like it fits and it feels right. And I, and I am able to prioritize all the things that I want to. I love that. I think routine's important. It's something I'm still tweaking because I got into the habit recently over the last couple of months of checking my phone for like business things in the morning, like straight away. Yeah. And it's like, oh, it's not a good thing. That too, because of my, my family's all in London and I'm like, I can't not check my phone as soon as I wake up because like, 
I just just in case. So I know. And then you go into like a rabbit hole, don't you? Uh, that's that's a good thing to work towards. If there was one thing you wish people spent more time doing. I mean, we've spoken about a lot of powerful, important things this podcast. But what would be one thing that you just wish people spent more time thinking about? Connecting and being in nature, like truly just like appreciating it, not like taking from it, but just like really like observing it. And like, you can't not be in awe and like feel some sort of like deep contentment when you end up experiencing nature in that way. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much. It was so wonderful. Honestly, you guys are so great. And um, yeah, honestly, it was such a wonderful conversation. Will, I really loved that episode with Radi and I wanted to ask you straight away, what was your biggest takeaway? It was really interesting to speak to her. She's got definitely an angelic energy um, and I actually think that comes across on the internet too. So she was definitely a really kind soul. I think the biggest thing that I actually thought about for a while after we wrapped up was um, when she spoke about nature. I actually, I really think that nature is so healing and a really good grounding space. And I was like spending some time in nature for weeks, like I'd spend a little bit every day and it, I felt so much better from that. So I started doing it today and yesterday. And I think I'm going to continue doing that too. I think it's important because sometimes we get so caught up in like racing to the next thing that we just forget to stop and actually be outside for a bit. So that's definitely something I took away. I also think that what she was saying about the spices and how she was talking about how food influences our gut, or they're such important things that, again, I don't think that we hear enough of really considering how much I feel it it is impactful on our, our mental health. So that's something else to keep in mind. I'm going to look into the spices and, and try to learn more about that. I found that really interesting. With that in mind, thank you for listening this far. We hope you really enjoyed the episode. If you liked it, please send it to a friend and rate it five stars on whatever podcast platform you're listening on. Also, don't forget to follow us on our socials at Really Mental Podcasts and make sure to go support Radi as well on her socials. All right, everyone, it's been an amazing episode and we'll see you next week. Make sure to take care of yourself and uh, spend some time in nature. We'll talk to you soon. Even when you lose all hope, you go deeper than you've gone. Hold on till you can't no more. Hey everyone, we have a really mental show on the Amazon Amp app. We're going to be hosting live conversations with talented humans like you hear on the podcast here. So make sure you go follow us on the Amazon Amp app at Really Mental. And we want you to know that no matter who you are, you're not alone. So hopefully we'll see you on Amazon Amp at 7 p.m. PT, 10 p.m. ET every Sunday. All right, see you then, beautiful human. I just want to end this episode today, Will, by like talking directly to the audience saying like, if you guys are struggling, Will and I aren't like professionals in this field. We're just telling our experiences through stories and kind of just sharing what we've been through. But if you are really struggling, we do highly suggest going to see a therapist and professional help because they will be the ones that can really help you in your situation. Of course, feel free to share your stories with us and DM us. Um, we want to know what you're going through, but make sure you take the time to speak to a professional because that's going to give you the most help. That said, we hope that these stories and the people we've spoken to can really help you on your journey to, to finding that right person, whether it's a therapist or that friend to talk to about it. Make sure you take the time to do that.